to come out because my waters are starting to leak but the babe the the stitch needed to come out so the first thing they did was take out the stitch and also because i had this really painful toothache i didn't realize until i got to hospital that my face had swollen and my face was literally like my cheek was like this size and apparently it was affecting the way i was talking as well so every doctor that came to see me kept saying what why what's wrong with your mouth you like you know the way you're talking it's affecting the way you're talking and then they were going to get someone in to come to come drain so apparently i had fluid uh, around the, i didn't i didn't look in the mirror to be honest it, i was in pain i was in pain so i didn't even look in the mirror so they were meant to get someone to come drain whatever was happening i think i i have an abscess so i think the abscess got really infected and it got really swollen so there was a lot of fluid in there so they were meant to drain that bit out they never did they never did that but the first thing they did was take out my stitch and then it was just a waiting game so day one i was okay and then day two i woke up in the middle of the night because um a lady had come in i guess she was contracting she was very loud and she woke me up so i got up i sat on my bed and then it hit me <laughs> the pain hit me and i did not dilate past i think it was five centimeters so i started contractions at i started having contractions at i think it might have been 1 a.m i think and so they were just expecting me to dilate a bit more and then obviously for for delivery to progress and at that point i was 29 weeks in one day so they were just waiting for you know delivery to i mean uh yeah i guess to deliver uh to delivery to progress and nothing was happening i didn't go past five centimeters for hours for hours and hours and then suddenly i was being monitored and well i wasn't being monitored the baby was being monitored and then suddenly the midwife asked me a question she said did you just have a contraction i went yeah and then she she didn't say anything so i asked her why she said nothing and then she asked me again did you have did you just have a contraction i said yes and she went oh uh the baby's heart rate is dropping the baby is getting tired and I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this. Guys, I am not ashamed to say this. I said to her, I said, you need to get the baby out right now. And then she was like, well, we haven't planned for C-section. I said, I don't care. If anything happens to my baby, I am suing everyone. From the top management all the way down to the cleaner, I don't care. I am suing you all. You better get my child out now. And then she went to go get the doctors and they came in and then they obviously started checking me and then they realized that she was getting tired my, my and so i was rushed really rushed into the theater i was on a general anesthetic again and yeah and then she was born she was born she was born at 29 weeks and one day and i obviously didn't get to see her i'll try and insert pictures in there somewhere so my husband wasn't in the room with us because um like because I, I was i i was on a general anesthetic so he wasn't allowed in the room but he was in the room next door so he said he saw them getting bringing her out and then the minute she was born he he was asked to come into the room to have a look at her or take pictures so he took he took a picture really quickly and then he was asked to leave the room and then she was like cleaned up and everything and then she was placed in the incubator so she was on oxygen for like half a day and then she was breathing by herself afterwards but i didn't get to see her so she was born um 29 weeks in one day she weighed two pounds so one point i think it was 1.09 kg and i'm getting a bit teary <laughs> talking about this um 1.09 kg she weighed she was very tiny but she was a long baby she was very i won't say tall can you say tall she was quite long and yeah she was born at seven 
uh, 05 a.m. And yeah, she weighed two pounds. And I didn't get to see her until I think like an hour or two hours after. And I remember coming to you from the general anesthetics and I was so weak. I was so confused. I did not know what's happening. I remember asking my husband what, what's happening. And and I, I, I don't know if I passed out or I just fell asleep. I woke up again. That happened at least two, three times. And I think on the third time, I went, where's my baby? Where's my baby? And then they took me to go see her. I put a picture in there somewhere when I saw her. She was in the incubator, so I couldn't touch her or... And she was all, and she, I think she had jaundice. Yeah, she had jaundice as well. So she was under the lamp. So she, it looked, the first time I saw her, she looked scary. She had wires everywhere. Uh, her, her eyes were covered because she was under the lamp and she was just so tiny. And I was just excited. I was just happy. I was just really happy that she was there. Like I, I have a child, I've got a live baby, I know she's early but she's here and she's alive and at the time she was healthy and I was just very grateful for that and and also because I was very tired I don't think I knew what happened because I remember her midwife saw me the next day and she said oh my god you look a lot better today if I had asked you to wheel me or just sign over everything you have to me yesterday you would have done it you had no idea what was happening I was so confused the day she was born and then the next day you know she was in hospital and I stayed in hospital as well for about four days at one point I, I just said to them you know I need to leave because I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired I just needed my own bed um, so I just said can you just discharge me and I found out later that they wouldn't let me go because I'd lost five pints of blood and because I was on blood thinners, they'd forgotten that I was on blood thinners. And so they said I shouldn't have had, I shouldn't have had general anesthetics or something. Yeah, or something along those lines or whatever, because I was on blood thinners. So I lost a, fit, a little bit of blood. And so they were checking to see that was okay. And if not, you know, to give me a blood transfusion. I said I was fine. I was, are you, I've got a child. I don't care nothing. I don't know what's happening with me. I just got a child and she was my priority. I didn't care about anything else. It was just her. Like all my focus was on her. I said, you know, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let me just see my baby. And I was just there with her all the time. And I remember the first time I get to um, hold her. Oh, I cried. I cried. My mom was there with me and I, I was so nervous because I didn't even know. She's so fragile. She was so tiny. I didn't even know how to hold her properly. Uh, and then, yeah, I got to do skin to skin with her. And she was just, just looking at her. She was just the most precious thing ever. And I wanted to name her Precious. I wanted to name her Precious, but I, I decided against it because of many reasons. <laughs> but I just thought it was the best name for her, Precious. I thought she was so precious, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, just looking back now, and she's five. Like, she's the most healthy. Like, she's so healthy. I've never had to take her to hospital for anything. Like, you, you see her and you wouldn't even know. She's premature. Like, she was born prematurely. Like... She is healthy. She is very strong. She is so smart. She is very cheeky. <laughs> she's a cheeky five-year-old. Uh, but she's the most happiest child ever. Always smiling. Always happy. And every time I look at her, I'm just so blessed that she's here. And, you know, like, I say to people, like, she was born early and they don't believe me because she's quite tall. For a five-year-old and she, like she just turned five um recently but she's quite tall and yeah i just every every year every birthday i just look at her and say well, I'm, I'm very grateful i'm very grateful for you it was the most difficult times when obviously the period of her birth when she was born because you know, I, I was weak myself and I had a C-section. I had to travel from 
the town that I lived in into Brighton which is about 30 minutes away every day and uh, the doctors, the midwives, the nurses, everyone in Brighton Hospital were just, were just really, really amazing people. Um, they took care of all the babies and everyone in the hospital. And I just can't be thankful enough, you know. Just, I, I don't even know how to, I don't even know what to say. And yeah, she was in hospital, she was in Brighton for two weeks and she got transferred to the town the hospital in the town that i live in for i think six weeks all together and i remember the day she was discharged for us to come home so she was an outpatient um so they allowed me to bring her home after i think she was about 34 weeks gestation or corrected whatever they call it um and yeah on the way home just as we were leaving the hospital i met the gynecologist so the doctor that did my circ lunch so the doctor <laughs> the really really straightforward blunt doctor uh, that did my stitch so i met him on the way out and he he said to me oh, do i know you i went yeah you did my stitch i went i thought so do you have the baby then? I went, yes, I did. Thank you very much. She was born at 29 weeks, but she's here and she's healthy and we're going home. Um, one of my colleagues said to me, <laughs> oh, bless him. I think he was just being kind. He said, he's, he just told me he's the only child of his parent and his mom had 10 miscarriages before he was born. And in my head, I was thinking, God, pff, yeah, God forbid. I don't want to have 10 miscarriages <laughs> I don't know how you could keep going after like five but um but his mom kept going and they had him and when he was telling me the story he was also telling me that his partner was expecting as well so it was being nice and but I was like no that's not me you know god forbid um I won't get to 10. so I hope you've um, learned something from my story and i want to wish my daughter a happy birthday a happy fifth birthday i love you hopefully you get to watch this video sometime in the future and guys if you haven't subscribed to my channel please don't forget to do so and i'll see you in my next one thank you